Hello, everyone. My name is Johan Steen. Um, I'm glad to be part of the AI Expo event again this year and to Dr. Nick and his team for all your hard work behind the scenes. Thank you for hosting yet another amazing event. I would like to speak to you today about intelligent automation and how you as a business owner can use this technology in a smart way and in a way that makes sense to actually compete better, to bring down your operational costs, to keep your staff, which is a topic I'm going to speak about today. How do we empower our people and not get rid of them because of where this technology can take us? Now, many of you have heard of the term robotic process automation. Many of you are familiar with it. Some of you might work for organizations that implement this technology, and some of you might actually be the customers of organizations and vendors that have implemented this kind of technology for you. And my experience, especially in the South African market, is that there are only a handful of big enterprises who have really successfully utilized this technology. For the greater part, it seems to me when I speak to many customers, that the return that they were hoping for, the financial return, the efficiency returns, are not there. They've paid a lot of money for these robot licenses. And yes, in some instances, the, the bots are performing well. But it does seem like there's almost a, a bad taste in people's mouths when you speak to them about smart automation. And there are many reasons why automation initiatives can fail or at least not be as successful as we want it to be. And I'm gonna to touch on some of those reasons today. These days, however, we are speaking about intelligent automation or hyper automation or those kind of things. And it would be interesting to see what kind of terms others uh, in this um, webinar and in this um, event, uh, what kind of terms they use. But my talk today is really to talk about intelligent automation. What is it about? How can we use it? And so forth. But before we get there, I just want to give you a number of statistics first. Recently in global surveys covering all the business domains, nearly 90% of business leaders indicated that they plan to deploy intelligent automation to stay ahead of their competitors. 42% of CEOs indicate that their organizations are already on a digital transformation journey, with 56% indicating they have experienced gains with the implementation of intelligent automation. Now, intelligent automation has a global adoption rate of about 50% at the moment. And over the next two or so years, it is estimated that this adoption rate will increase to 70%. It is also estimated that over the next five years, intelligent automation will reach levels of adoption that took industrial automation nearly 200 years to achieve. So we are definitely in for some exciting times. Also close to my heart is the societal impact of this technology, especially here in South Africa, where we have record high unemployment rates, where many of our industries are highly regulated. If we think of banking, for instance, if we think of how unionized some of these industries are. So something that we as people who work in this field need to really understand, we really need to debate about this, and we really need to find solutions. Because on the one hand, to compete globally, we have to automate smartly and we have to automate smarter. But what will happen to the people whose jobs will inevitably be displaced? So from a not just a technological or an automation platform point of view, but we have to speak about people, families, society. And as I will talk about later on in this presentation, Intelligent automation and the smart technology era really gives us a lot of opportunities to do good in society. But we will always have to think about the impact it will have on our workforce while we try and lower our operational costs, while we try and operate quicker. 
And while we most likely will need some people, and while we most likely will have some people that we may not really need anymore, so what do we do with those people? So the societal impact of this technology, especially here in South Africa, should always be front of mind and it should be something that we should try and solve for together. Now, a slide just to tell you what I want to cover during this short talk with you today. Firstly, I would like to talk about what is uh, intelligent automation, understanding it. And I'm going to compare it to four or so of the main things that we as humans do when we work and how smart technology can not only imitate us, but in many instances, do it much better than us. Then I'm going to get to what I already mentioned, the societal impact, the promise of a better world. What are the things that we can do? What are the things we need to be careful about? What are the things that can actually make our world now and the world of the future of our children better through using this kind of technology? And then just before I end, I want to talk about the steps that we can take when we embark on a business journey using intelligent automation and smart technology. And I want to leave you with a few practical ideas that you can hopefully take home with you and use it as you plan for utilizing and implementing technology like this in your own business. So firstly, understanding intelligent automation. And like I've already said, intelligent automation will mimic and do better some of the key things that we do as humans when we work. And the first thing I would like to touch on is vision. We, when we work, we obviously see things, we read emails, we read documents, we understand what we see, and then we process it and we send it for approval or we approve it ourselves but we essentially kick off a number of processes because we've seen something. So the way that processes often start off for us as humans is by seeing something, acknowledging it, understanding it, and then following the process. But as many of you know, computers and smart technology can also do this, and we call it computer vision. Think of optical character recognition. These days we talk about IOCR or intelligent character, optical character recognition. That's also computer systems or algorithms seeing the ability to read a document. Now, we've already seen when a document is fairly neat, if it's typed, if it is fairly structured, like a purchase order, for instance, that uh, the, the robots can read the information and then actually action it into other systems, procurement systems and the like. We've also seen a lot of... Um, maturity happening these days with handwritten notes, where um, that through machine learning, which we will touch on soon, the systems or the algorithms can actually learn to recognize not only the handwriting, but also the contextual meaning of the handwriting. The next thing we do as humans well, is doing or executing. So firstly, we will see something, an instruction, an email, and then we do something about that. And here, smart workflows or robotic process automation can really play a big role. I often say that robotic process automation is like the slaves, or you could even say the hands of our workforce. It doesn't necessarily think, it doesn't learn, it's not the brain, it's the hands. But when we implement RPA correctly and use it, correctly, it can really benefit our businesses a lot. So where a human worker would see, for instance, a request come in, say a request for a quote, because you see that request through the email or the letter or the fax, and believe it or not, a lot of organizations are still using faxes, you can then actually do something about that because you understand what you are seeing and you then action the next steps and, and computer software and algorithms can do the same. Is it autonomous? In other words, can it do it without human intervention? More and more so. So often when I speak with people or with clients about smart technology like artificial intelligence, I find that there's a lot of terms that we throw around, machine learning, AI, RPA, um, 
and so forth. But are we comparing apples with apples? Are we speaking about the same things? And if people tell me they're working with artificial intelligence or machine learning, I normally ask them two things. Can the software that you use operate largely without you? Because it's executing, but it is also learning. In other words, there's a level of autonomy. And the second one is, can it recognize patterns, make predictions, and essentially, again, without human intervention, um, action those preventions? The third things we humans do, obviously, is language. We speak to each other. We hear. We understand. We write language as well. And here we're speaking about natural language processing when it comes to smart computer systems or intelligent automation systems. We can actually, remember when we spoke about vision, we spoke about intelligent OCR, so we can recognize the words as characters on a form. But through natural language processing, we can add meaning to those words. An important application here is what they call sentiment analysis. So your customer might be speaking to a human call center agent, but those calls are recorded and transcribed. And now we can start looking at certain language use, certain words you, being used, and also start picking up the sentiments behind it. We also have some call centers, and we will see this more and more, where the customer is speaking to an artificial intelligence agent or a conversational artificial intelligent agent. We can also pick up anger, for instance, in their voice and in the way they speak, frustration. And we might set the parameters that if we pick up a certain level of anger or frustration, that the call is then rather rooted through to a senior person in the organization. We as humans understand language, we speak language, we hear language. Smart technology can now do the same and it really is quite accurate. If you've used Siri, if you've used your Google Home or your Alexa, sometimes it frustrates us. But overall, I'm surprised. I mean, I've got a very specific accent. And even though a lot of these are American products or Western products, the accuracy is astounding. Now, touching on language, you know, in Africa, they reckon we've got two to 3,000 different languages being spoken. There's a huge need for us as a community to work together. Firstly, the different languages here in South Africa. And I know of companies who's doing great work in some of the larger languages like Isuzulu or Kosa or others to make sure that customers can speak to an artificial intelligent agent in their native African language. Next, as humans, we obviously think. Not only do we see, not only do we hear, uh, not only do we um, speak and use language, but we think and we learn. And through machine learning technology, smart technology systems can do the same. So you can also, through the way your clients interact with you, pick up patterns not only to predict and prevent churn, but also to determine products and services that you can upsell to them. We can also, through pattern recognition and machine learning, uh, pick up ways that we can better serve our clients. Think about your not only your front office, your, your customer-facing systems, but also your back office, your more operational systems. Mag imagine how much quicker and better and more accurate we can do work if an AI system of sorts through pattern recognition can help us get to the answer of a problem much quicker. There's huge technological advance in this field. A lot of it comes down to the maturity of your data. Is it structured? Is it unstructured? Is it all over the show? Think of PR or GDPR, in other words, privacy and ethical use of the data. But are you even harvesting the data that your clients consented to so that you can serve them better? When we talk about the business use of this technology, remember it can see, it can do it can recognize patterns, it can think and it can learn. Thinking, learning is all about the data and that is very important. Before I end off, I wanna to touch on some of the societal um, aspects again, and not just out there in the world, but also the well-being of our colleagues and of our workers. First thing I wanna speak about when we talk about implementing smart technology and intelligent automation 
is to always make sure that it is a people first initiative, not a platform or a technology led initiative. We need to make sure that we understand how smart automation will impact our workforce and our workforce planning. We need to make sure we understand what kind of people and who will most likely become redundant as we roll out this technology. But then we also need to make sure that we have a, an adequate career path and a training path for these people. Personally, for me, if a client wants to automate primarily for FTE reduction, in other words, to get rid of headcount, I'm always re reluctant to work with clients like that. Because, yes, a big part of, of saving costs is essentially getting rid of people. But what about future growth? That's another way to see it. So if right now you have 100 people working for you and you determine that by smartly automating, you most likely only need 80 or so. So there's a business case right there. But what about the future? Because you might not stay at 100 people. Maybe in the next year or two, you will grow to 120 people. So rather than saying, let's cut from 100 to 80, I would say, let's stick to 100. And when we need 120, we don't need the 20 extra people because the 100 people are working effectively through being um, empowered by smart technology and automation. So think of it as rather than a knee-jerk reaction, getting rid of people conversation. Think of it as a future growth conversation. Make sure that you, you, you uh, the big thing for me is make sure that the people who will be most impacted by automation, that you make them part of the journey. Don't sit somewhere in your ivory tower, in your boardroom, and determine how best to automate. Speak to your frontline staff. Speak to the people who will benefit most from your automation initiatives, because they will most likely have a few ideas that you have never thought about. They might share frustrations that could be benefit through automation that you would never even know. So keep the people in mind, keep them involved, because then you will win their trust from the start. They feel that they are part of the process. They feel that their voices are being heard. And if we do it right through the right kind of change management initiatives, we get people excited because they realize that they will have different and more interesting kind of jobs as we go through this process and not the mundane, repetitive work that so many people are doing. So we've spoken about our own workers. Next, from a societal impact or a doing good point of view, of course, our clients, and I've already touched on clients many times. Yes, we, are, we have businesses, we have to work smarter, we have to bring down costs, we have to sell more of our products and services. That's just the world we live in. But we can do so much better in servicing our clients through using this technology. So as I've said before, take your staff members on this journey with you. Make sure you understand that those whose work and jobs will be impacted by automation have a seat at the table. But for me, the same applies to your clients. Make sure that your clients understand how you're developing this technology, how it will improve their lives, but also make sure that your key clients uh, or a segment of your clients, a percentage of them, also have a seat at the table. What will make it easier for them to transact with you through smart technology, through smart automation, through better using their data? They are already voluntarily giving you certain amounts of data. It's almost like we have an obligation to serve them better. There are so many ways that we can do a better job in not only re retaining our clients, but serving them better and winning many more clients if we use this technology smartly. Next up for me is society as a whole. We play a role in this world. And when it comes to climate change, which is a big challenge that we will continue facing for the foreseeable future and longer, when it comes to technological upheaval, we are creating a world that could be that can go very bad very fast. I'm definitely more of a have more of a utopian view and a positive view about where we can steer this technology, but we should never let the wool be pulled over our eyes, so to speak, and think that smart technology cannot drastically and in a very bad way, in a very adverse way, impact 
the world we live in and the world that we are leaving for our children. So education and healthcare, I've already mentioned that. And there are so many other aspects. Think, for instance, of drones flying autonomously and taking protective personal equipment to outlying areas in this pandemic. Uh, even the South African National Blood Service have started utilizing drones to take uh, blood that is desperately needed to far out rural areas. There's so many things we can do to better our society if we do this together and if we do it smartly. It's not just the, the job of government to do it, although they have a massive role to play, but we as ordinary citizens and especially we who work in the field of smart technology have a role to play. There are a lot of organizations doing amazing work in our country utilizing smart technology to help people. But it's also quite fragmented, it seems to me. I really think there's a lot more we can do by working together and create perhaps a, an ecosystem of collaboration, a portal or something, but it's something we need to think about. How can we use our influence, our expertise, and our networks to not only make more money, but to do good and to continue doing good in our world? Lastly, before I end off, I want to touch on just some practical um, aspects when it comes to implementing smart automation or intelligent automation into your business. A lot of what I'm about to say is really common sense, but we sometimes so hung up with the technology that we forget to just stand back, have a breather and say, forget the tech, but are we doing it right with the tech? So automation will not solve all our problems. I often laugh or say tongue in cheek that you can't automate stupidity. So if the way you work as an organization is not right, you will automate and automating it will be a disaster. So the first thing, as is always the case, is what is your business objective? Don't look for something to automate because you found a new platform or because one of your vendors have showed you something new and exciting. Find out what is the business objective. What are you trying to do? Is it mainly to increase your amount of customers or your market share? Is it mainly to decrease your churn percentages? Is it to decrease your cost? There can be, as you know, many, many things. But align your technology strategy and especially your smart automation strategy to your business objective. And later on, you can start looking at other things. But in order to get cadence, in order to show that the business case is working, in order to secure funding for future projects and, according, and, and to win your people over, you have to be focused on some of your key business objectives when you roll out or plan to roll out this technology. The next important aspect is to look at the history of automation initiatives in your organization. Now, some organizations have not yet really looked at smart or, techno or even robotic process automation. A lot of organizations have, and a lot feel that it has not given them the return or the efficiencies they were hoping for. So when you look at not only the business objectives um, in your organization, look also at where technology or, or automation technology have been rolled out. Now, there are maybe some areas in your business that have rolled it out and continue to utilize it very successfully, but there are most likely others that have done it and it's either totally failed or it's not really given the, the returns and, and delivered on the promise of what this technology can do. Because now you're already on the back foot. If you now come with intelligent automation and people are already negative because they've kind of been there, done that, it didn't work, you've got a different job to do there and you have to keep these things in mind. Find out why the automation initiatives did not work. Was it the technology or the platforms? It could be, but it's most likely the way it was implemented because people were not taken on the journey. The business case wasn't clear. Um, it was most likely federated and it wasn't beneficial to the greater business. There can be many, many reasons, but always keep in mind that there can be or could have been some smart automation initiatives somewhere in your business. Find out why it didn't work as well as people thought it would. Use those learnings. Don't make the same mistakes again. And if we do it right, 
we can actually start winning people over, get them excited because they can see that this time it seemed like this stuff is working and my day-to-day job is getting better. I've already touched on data and on people. Those are two important aspects to think about when you go on to this journey. But I would like to just end off this talk with speaking about talent. On the one hand, you have people that you need to upskill in your business. But you also might need to find outside talent, new talent, new breed of people, a new breed of thinking, really, to effectively utilize intelligent automation in your business. Make sure you find the right people. Perhaps partner with one of your vendors to help you upskill your people and to identify new people that you can bring into your business. So culture fit is obviously important. People with the right kind of experience, people who not only understand this technologically, but understand the business application. It's a good time to offer your current workforce exciting new careers and exciting new ways of working. It's also a great opportunity to bring in new people for future growth with new ideas. So again, the way that these new people are introduced when it comes to proper communication, proper change management is important. We also have a talent gap in our market. In, a, in many fields when it comes to technology. When it comes to smart automation, there's a huge gap. You most likely will not easily find people who are experienced in this field. And again, there we may be as a commu- technological community. We have to work better together to make sure that people are trained and upskilled to use this technology. So just to wrap up, remember we spoke briefly about what is intelligent automation. We spoke about the four main things that we humans do that this technology can do better. We spoke about societal impact and the promise of a better world. And then we briefly just touched on some aspects around the business journey to implement technology like this. I trust that my talk was of benefit to you. I would love to hear from you on LinkedIn or on email and to have further discussions. Again, to Nick and his team, Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I trust you all will enjoy the rest of this conference, that we will network, albeit virtually, that we will talk and learn from each other. And I wish you all the very, very best. Thank you.